What is the absolute worst game you ever played? Maybe you thought of a game that was disappointing, or maybe you thought of a game that is filled with bugs and glitches. Although a few games I personally don't really like came to mind, I decided to find the definitive answer. I found a list of the top 100 lowest rated games on Steam, and I'm going to play them all to find out which game I personally think is the worst. Now, let's spin the wheel and get ready to go dumpster diving. Enforcer Police Crime Action? Cool, let's get right into it. Funny enough, this is actually my second time playing a police simulator game on dumpster diving, the first being my first ever video, Autobahn Police Simulator. That game was... All I have to do is get in the car. Yep, just gotta get in the car. Not great. And to be honest, just by looking at these screenshots on Steam, I'm not too excited for Enforcer either. But hey, I have been wrong before. So let's give this game a shot. The first thing I notice is a menu that is full of hotkeys that I'm not going to remember, and a settings menu that actually works. So this game is automatically better than 90% of the others on this list. We then start off with a little cinematic of our character on a bus ride to a town in the middle of nowhere. I chose to go with the female character because she looks clinically depressed, and I'm faced with the worst intro cutscene I have ever seen. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm extremely grateful that we get a cutscene this time, but it's all over the place. Our main character goes from talking about how her dad was a cop chasing scumbags, to how she hated the main city, to how her and her mother are moving to a small town full of drugs for some reason. And between her awfully cheery tone and this ominous flashing green wall in the background, it kind of takes me out of what little story there is in this game. After we arrive home and get our introduction to the controls, I go inside and see what I can do. I can bathe, sleep, and apparently I can even retire. Well, that was stupid. Time to try again. Like the good cop I am, I immediately shoot a civilian and, using my oddly lanky body, push him into the street hoping that a car will ramp off of him. I am slightly disappointed that he just gets pushed back like a bowling ball, but that's better than the car just clipping through him, I guess. I mess around for a little bit longer, hanging out with my mom while an audience cheers me on for some reason, and punching a few more civilians before the game suddenly ends. Apparently, I am fired, and the game ominously declares that I will be judged. All right. Third time's the charm. I decide to actually put on my uniform and go out on duty to see what kind of crimes I can solve. My first task is to take a three illegally parked vehicles, so that's what I'm gonna do. I walk around for a bit looking at all the cars before realizing something. I don't know what an illegally parked car looks like. The parking lots don't have lines in them, and I don't see any parking meters around, so I don't know what cars need tickets. Man, I wish they had signs up or something. Signs that are so big that only a complete idiot would miss them. I drive around a bit more, taking in the sights and talking to some civilians who really enjoy this one wall before I get an alert of a theft in the area. I immediately spring into action, interrogating everyone until I can get a description of the suspect. Then I run around until I find who I'm looking for. She immediately pulls a gun on me before dropping it when I yell at her, and then I take her to jail. This, uh, this takes a little bit longer than I'd like. Right when I'm about to end my shift, I get another call for a theft. That's fine. I knew what I was getting into when I signed up for the force. I drive over to the house and try to open the door, only to find out that I can't without a warrant. And for some reason, the robber won't open up even after I asked really really nicely. I break down the door and have a tiny shootout with the criminal since I forgot to equip my taser before sending him to jail. Finally, I can end my first shift as a cop. Not too bad if I say so myself. On my next shift, the chief wants me to set up some speed radars around the map, which while it's cool that they added these, it's also very annoying. The radars disappear if you drive even a little bit away, so if you want those tickets, you have to stand right next to them. Since I had nothing else to do, I tried out pulling people over. When you do that, you have the option to check their tags, do a breathalyzer test, and ask the drivers to get out so you can frisk them. Since for the most part, you can't tell if a driver is driving illegally unless you check them, it's annoying since you could spend a solid minute trying to get someone to pull over and get all of their information only for there to be nothing wrong with them. So, all you can really do here is just sit and wait for something to happen. In fact, aside from the random missions, this game has a lot of just waiting. You wait for people to speed when you have speed traps up, you wait for a mission to pop up, and then you just wait for your shift to be over. I spent the next in-game day just driving around to see what else the game had to offer. I found a gun store where you can buy a few guns, which was kinda cool except for the fact that you already start out with three guns when you're on duty. I drive around the rest of the map for a long time, and despite how big the map is, it just feels so empty. The main way to get points in this game is by either writing tickets or dealing with criminals. And while there are a few cars out here in the middle of nowhere, the more people that are in an area, the more likely it is that they're breaking the law and you can earn points. So if that's the case, why would you want to be anywhere else but the main city? I spend a while frisking people and learning to ascend to the heavens before I'm told to find a drunk. I find her fairly easily, but she isn't listening to my commands. And since I can't force her to do anything, all I can do is just 
spam my voice lines until she finally gives up when we take her to jail. Honestly, there's a lot more to do here than an Autobahn. However, there's only two real fun things to do here. First, like I said earlier, were the random missions you get. Every shift you have a special task you have to do, like creating roadblocks to inspect vehicles. This gives you a goal, so you have something to work forward to each shift instead of just waiting for the game to give you that opportunity. The second most fun thing I found to do in this game was to try to break it. After I leveled up a bit in the game, I unlocked the motorcycle, and for some reason the game doesn't know how to react with the motorcycle physics. I was ramming into cars, climbing cliffs, and at one point I crashed into a parking lot full of cars just to set all their alarms off. Ah, listen to the nice and peaceful sounds of the city. I played underwater for a bit, ran straight into traffic, and watched the world's slowest car accident before I got the call of my life. A drug deal is going on in my town and I'm gonna put a stop to it. I speed off towards the drug deal, doing some sweet flips to intimidate the criminals. I arrive on the scene ready to save my city, but alas, I was too late. The duo pull out their guns and after a very awkward few seconds, kill me. Rest in peace, senior trooper. You are one day away from retirement. After I finished up with Enforcer, I could see why the game wasn't well received, but I could also see the foundation of a good game here if it was just a little boring. I tried looking more into the developers, Odin Game Studio, to see if they were ever able to develop a positively rated game, but judging from the fact that all their games have been mixed or negative ratings on Steam and their social media pages haven't been updated since 2016, I don't think it worked out well for them. So instead, I looked more into the publisher, Excalibur Games. On Steam, it looks like Excalibur suffered the exact same way that Odin did. Nearly every single game that they published on Steam has either mixed or negative reviews. That's already a pretty bad look when your entire business model relies on promoting other people's games. Then I looked into their various other websites, starting with YouTube. First, I found a teaser trailer for Enforcer showing off how the game looked. And while normally I would bash a trailer for not showing any real gameplay, this is a teaser trailer so it gets a pass. I will say that it's funny that the description and the logo at the end both showed that the game was originally supposed to be called Enforcer Justice Law Order. I then found the game's actual trailer released three weeks later, and it's the exact same as the teaser trailer. There's still the harsh scene transitions, there's still no gameplay, and the video still shows the developers and publishers at both the beginning and end of this 27 second long trailer. The only difference is that the real trailer has some cover art, a new name, and a release date. Next, I go to Excalibur's website. It looks like they have a marketplace where they sell the games they publish, like Autobahn Police Simulator 2. Wait, that doesn't sound right. On Steam it says Autobahn was published by Aerosoft, not Excalibur. What gives? Well, as it turns out, Excalibur is actually a division of a company called Contact Sales LTD. If we go to their website, we can see all the other companies that Contact Sales LTD owns, including Aerosoft. So technically, Contact Sales LTD published both Autobahn and Enforcer, which makes a lot of sense. What doesn't make a lot of sense, however, is why Excalibur is only marketing some of their fellow publishers' games on their store. Why is Autobahn Police Simulator 2 on here, but not 1 or 3? At first, I thought Excalibur stopped updating their marketplace after a certain point because the company was either shut down or they stopped working with games, but that doesn't make any sense. Their homepage is promoting a game that was released in June of 2023, while Autobahn Police Simulator 3 was released in June of 2022. Then, I thought that they were just promoting their highest rated games only, which would make sense since the second Autobahn game is rated higher than the other two. But I don't know if that's it, since they don't seem to be promoting Dad Quest, a game they produced and one that actually has an overall positive rating on Steam for once. The only other thing I could think of is that the games on their store are physical versions only, but it looks like their listing for Enforcer requires Steam, so I don't think that's the case either. Enforcer Police Crime Action is a game that could have been really fun. Maybe if the world was a little bit more fleshed out so you felt like there were other areas to explore besides the city. Maybe if it felt like there were more for you to do on the streets instead of pulling people over, pressing the same few buttons, and sometimes you can write a ticket or send them to jail. I honestly couldn't tell you. But unfortunately, I'm not here to think about what could have been, I'm here to write what is. And this game is a bit too boring compared to some of the other games I've played so far, but at least it isn't broken. Anyway, I hope to see you all again next time. Peace out.